Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Take a step back and realize what day it is today. It is Wednesday, one week since we logged on to FC25 for the first time on the web app. It's been a crazy week, a lot has happened, but there is one thing specifically that stands out to me right now and that is evolutions. Guys, it is crazy how many evos we've had. I know some of them started on the game, but with this new evolution system, and especially the evo that was dropped yesterday, it is creating some really unique cards, not only for the now, but cards you can evo now that are good, that will actually set you up for success in the future with even more cracked cards with evolutions as well. So that's what I'm really excited about after yesterday's evo. I wanna talk about that, and the market is Falling, guys. We have prices dipping because people are getting ready for what is expected to happen on the full release of FC25 this Friday. It's crazy with so much that has happened already. The full game is not even released yet. Like, we're still in the early access period. So, we got to talk about the market and, of course, what to look forward to a new team of the week, too in today's video as well. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Now let's start by getting into the Tuesday content from yesterday as we normally do and go to the upgrade pack section because we already have the 77 times two, but we had our first gamble type of pack yesterday, an 82 plus times three upgrade pack. It's easy to do and it's very cheap and that's the best part about it. Just an 83 rated squad, which is nine 83s and two 82s if you're counting. This is 100% worth it in my opinion, not because you're expected to get a huge pull, but just because it is an 8,000 coin SBC. I think a lot of us have 83s in our clubs right now from all the random objective packs. Maybe if you've done a couple of gold upgrades or whatever, it's just really easy to complete and I love that. It's cheap easy and a chance at something decent you can't expect anything crazy we did open these yesterday and somebody packed the Bruin in the stream which was dope i think i got a couple of 83s and then an 82 like it wasn't good for me but it's at least fun to try and it's super duper cheap so i don't have any qualms with that that one's a w from my book just because it is so cheap now we had a player sbc as well yesterday ea is continuing with the squad foundation players we have nwsl with ali watt also very cheap just an 83 rated squad here and the thing about this card that's kind of interesting is 90 pace she has 90 pace 85 shooting and 85 dribbling this might be one of the better maybe i'm slightly biased because i'm american but slightly better squad foundation sbc players 90 attack positioning and 88 finishing with 92 reactions also 90 jumping power shot press proven quick step and acrobatic play styles on her card 3-3 is not the best of course but in combination with that you do have the new nwsl squad foundation objectives under the is it milestones tab yeah milestones tab here so maybe if you're playing your squad battles games this week you just throw in four nwsl players four liga portugal players or if you'd rather do liga f i honestly think that throwing in these players into your squad battles matches if you're playing on a low difficulty just trying to get some rewards and not the most elite rewards you possibly can get this is a good way to get some extra packs and some good players for you know maybe evolutions in the future if you like these two leagues or just some extra fodder which could be useful at any time in the game as well doing that with your uh, squad foundations times squad battles kind of combination there is something i think a lot of people do but it's something i want to mention because i don't think we want to overlook it so that was our sbc content yesterday not the most crazy stuff the stuff that really got people talking and us really excited was the evolution section guys and it was another evo and it was a sprint supreme evolution i don't think any of us was, were expecting this we actually had leaks yesterday that that leaked center attacking mid evo was going to be dropping and then it didn't like the leaker tweeted 15 minutes before content and said hey we're getting this evo probably today it didn't drop so he got some stick for that of course but this evo honestly is kind of sick the real reason this evo is sick is because the new system that upgrades cards by their individual stats and of course the new maximums with player requirements and all that you can put in way more players this is where the new system really starts to shine the sprint supreme evo it's only a pace boost that's all that it is max 84 overall position center back and it basically boosts up the sprint speed and the acceleration as you can see here the first up upgrade which you do have to play five matches for this is the only downside it's a little bit of a grind and i'll talk about that here in a second you get plus 10 sprint speed up to 78 sprint speed plus four acceleration well it's actually plus 10 but you know Sandra martinez gets capped out at 78 there so that's why his is only plus four but it's plus 10 to both sprint speed 
and acceleration. You can see that out here on the main page, of course. It says that right there. This is actually really sick. And I want to tell you why. There's three type of ways you can look at this evolution, guys, as we go to Footbin and take a look at some of the most popular players. The number one way you can look at this is upgrade a center back who's already in your team, like maybe this Konate or the Lissandro Martinez that I just looked at. They don't get a huge boost in pace, right? 75 to 79. But you're going to boost that acceleration up because Konate's acceleration before this What's it on his gold card? Plus, it's plus eight. Is that what I saw right there? He's 69 acceleration going to 78. That's going to be a noticeable boost in game. And also, the biggest thing about this is all these center backs are lengthy, or most of them are lengthy on their accelerate. This is just going to make them faster in game off of the first step or uh, their sprint speed if it was already low. This is a really, really good Evo for that. So you can either upgrade somebody from your team who you already have. Maybe you already have Konate. Maybe you already have somebody, and you just slide them into this evolution, keep playing games with them, and you get a pace boost. I think that's option number one. Option number two is you get a completely new center back. Maybe you see how cracked this Joe Gomez double, triple evolution is, and you want to get the Joe Gomez here all the way juiced it up to 86 pace with 82 defending and 81 physical, and you want that card with the multiple Evos. I think there's a, absolutely a good shot for that. Or Emre Chan, if you put him into the intro to stat limits and then into the sprint supreme, he looks disgusting, honestly. He can also play center defensive mid. That's a really sick card right there, too. So you can get a new, completely new center back from one of the Evos that you really like, or, and this is my favorite option here, and I think the best example of this is my center back from my club, who I will be evolving most likely in this, Kuti Romero. If there's nobody that sticks out to you or there's nobody in your club right away that you're like, oh man, this is sick. I want to upgrade them right away. Find somebody like this. The problem with Kuti Romero cards all the time is that he doesn't have enough pace. This literally solves that. Or any center back that you have in your club or a player that you're a fan of that always is just lacking in some pace, literally find that player, even if it's like a Cherby, right? A Cherby's going to go from 60 pace in this to 70 pace, and that's just going to set you up in the future for evolutions of that same player that you will actually want to use that are going to be sick and they're going to be even better than they could have been before because as of right now you're upgrading that payers players base pace which is going to make them more usable in the future so that's my favorite thing about this like i'm going to evo this coup to your marrow i just got to pack him for that first owner badge because you know how it is if i buy him for 1600 coins and don't have the first owner badge it's not going to hit the same that's a personal preference maybe not for you but i just think that this evo is honestly really sick because you could do so many things with it and it's just another testament to how evos so far this year have been so many good evos man like the octopus sure 50k that's expensive the box to box evo awesome that one created some absolute gems like the grabbing burst right that was not possible without that one of course we love uh the intro to stat limits that one's cool and we love the ultimate edition evolution and really the club member um reward one the one that dalo fits the one that uh, malo gusto fits that a lot of people are raving about those items for like a lot of the evos that we've had i mean again you kind of have to forget about some of the ones that are cosmetic because those whatever like i'm not paying 35k for a purple card i came up against one in rivals yesterday and i was shocked but i'm not doing many of those but the free ones that we have had have been really good and it's all a part of the new upgrade system so evo so far the start of fc25 i think have been fantastic and i'm excited for more of them to come and honestly ggs to ea for uh, all the solid evos that we've had so far but the weird thing is about this evolution too you maybe even saw it there's a player here in my open Meccano. open Meccano is in my starting 11 he doesn't get a boost at all from this. Actually, that's false. He does get a bit of a boost. He gets a plus two acceleration boost. So he gets a very small boost. But there's other players like Mickey Vandeman um, who get a very small boost as well. What's he got? No, he doesn't get a boost at all. 93 sprint speed, 81 acceleration on Mickey Vandeman's card. But he technically fits the Evo. So he, he does not get a boost here. Um, yeah, this one's a double evolution, so you get the intro to stat limits, so there is a boost on this one. I clicked on the wrong card. But it's kind of weird how some players can fit an evolution now but not get any boost in stat. And that this is kind of our first experience with that with some of those players that have above 78 acceleration and sprint speed like Mickey Vandeman who fit the Evo because he's under 84 rated in a center back. He just doesn't get any boost. So that's kind of crazy. And that was one thing I wanted to point out to you guys as you maybe see like, oh, wait, there's a Mickey Vandeman Evo. Well, he doesn't really get a pace boost unless you put him into that intro to stat limits one. So I just th thought that that was really interesting. And I wanted to point that out because that's a new possibility this year with evolution as well. Somebody could fit an Evo and not get 
an upgrade. So I thought that was really interesting. Now, let's pass on from that and talk about the market, guys, because we did trade yesterday. We did make a few coins here or there. Uh, you see a lot of these. These are actually most of them coin losses. Like I bought all these dudex here for like um, 48,000 coins. I could have held on. He actually went up a little bit higher. Um, I did sell some Benzema's. I used both of these in game once again. I sold the Saliba that I bought for a tax loss. Or I bought them for 225 and sold them for 230. A lot of the market is down. Like Saliba now is 200 thousand coins he has dropped and that's the story of the market over the last day a lot of graphs looking like this and i think it's just because of what we started talking about in yesterday's video we noticed on monday that the market was trending downwards it felt like the market was feeling very meh now, people didn't really want to buy a lot of players for teams and the prices that we saw on the weekend that we were hoping to see continually rise just kind of started to falter out. And it felt like there wasn't enough demand to meet the prices on the market to keep them going up. Like, take a look at Salah. He's 312. I think he was under 300K yesterday. He was 289 at his lowest point. And sure, you had some fluctuations here, but is there really that much profit? I mean, if you bought it 289, sold for 320, sure, I guess you're making 10,000 coins there, 15K ish. Not terrible. There is a little bit of profit there, but. For most cards yesterday, that wasn't the case. You just had drops straight down and a lot of prices not doing too good. Neymar's 160,000 coins after on Sunday, he was 200K. Like yesterday, guys, really rocked the market. Kind of like a little bit of a reset, right? I think a lot of people were just getting out of cards and they were preparing for what is to potentially come this weekend with the standard edition release, which we kind of had been talking about and hinting at in the past couple of videos is usually something that impacts the market because people are opening a lot of packs and there's a lot of supply. EA put out some really big packs during that time frame as well, and that usually impacts the market in a negative way. Now, the next question is, as you see me bidding on a card here, obviously I've spent a lot of coins. I'm not super worried about the market. I still am, to be honest. I'm not holding on to many cards for investments. All I'm doing at the moment is trying to make four, five, six, seven thousand coins on little quick flips. I'm still grinding the market because quick flips are still very possible. Icons, heroes, informs, gold cards on bid. For goodness sake, man, I know it's grindy, but Patrick Guijaro, one of the most overpowered, hyped up players right now that pros are using, She's 30,000 coins. I added one to my watch list yesterday. She's a 37, 38,000 coin card. It went for 31K on bid. Boom. Easy 6K profit right there if you got that bid. That's why I'm looking at these verts right now because I think verts is low. He's getting a team of the week today. I'm willing to pay up to 74. He was 84K yesterday after he was announced in the team of the week. We're going to talk about that in a second. That's one place where you can maybe invest a little bit right now on the market for a hold for a little bit of a rise. But yeah, the market overall is down. I don't expect it to just just pop back up magically today because at the moment we're just kind of waiting for at least division rivals rewards and for sure friday with all the hype that the road to the knockout promo is going to bring still with the icons and heroes that are a bit unknown are they related to road to the knockouts and champions league or are they different we still don't know yet there's been no more leaks no more news about that so i'm being careful with the market now i will say I don't think that some players you have to sell on. If you bought them early last week, like let's say you bought Jamal Musiala when he was like, I think it was he 60 or 70,000 coins. Like when we were down here, when we were very low before the footprint graphs even started working. When Griezmann was 70, 80K, when Araujo was 60K or, you know, other examples of like when, I don't know, Kyle Walker was super cheap. I guess he wasn't super cheap to start off. But, you know, if there's a player that is appreciated in value that you're still making a lot of coins on, that's a top tier meta player, like when uh, Sophia Smith was under 200K, if you still have one of those, you're fine to hold for sure because you're not going to see those prices again. But if you bought on like Saturday or Sunday, I don't think you're going to see those higher prices again until maybe this weekend and maybe the cards don't even go up that high. It all depends. But at least right now, I would say just be a little bit cautious on the market because there's not as much demand as there was before. And we're kind of waiting for Friday to bring in more demand with more players, but also it's going to make player prices drop with some pack supply. And that's, again, the reason why a lot of people are kind of starting to sell and get those coins out of players so i think the market could drop a little further today i don't think it would be that extreme the most interesting part about the market's going to be tomorrow with rivals rewards but like i mentioned i think the most investable part of the market right now i'm talking investing not trading is cards that are going out of packs i'm looking at florian verts right now because like i just said he was up and now he's back down and you can already see it right off of the leak that we had for team of the week yesterday you have got cards like hyun min sun 
who are now extinct. He was like 311, 312,000 coins. He was dropping yesterday. He was dropping. And then, oh, he's in team of the week. Boom, straight back up. People realizing, oh, wait, remember how expensive all these cards were that were just out of packs for team of the week one? Like, Messi gold is still like 200, 300,000 coins while his inform is like the same price. That's going to happen to a guy like Sun, right? People are going to want to upgrade to him and buy him. And there's potential for a price range update and profits, right? That's the reason why people are buying this card right now. That's the reason that I would look at this official leaked team of the week too and just do a scanner on the market of some of these cards. A lot of them are already up. Like, of course, the Sun that we looked at. Rafinha and Luis Diaz are two of the most popular investments from this team of the week. They're gold cards as they go out of packs. You would appreciate, uh, expect them to appreciate in value, right? That's the whole point behind the investment. Olise's already up a ton uh nico jackson i don't know how much he would go up there for just his gold card and then the the verts card i'm actually going to show you guys this one because this is one that i was just clicking around the market on and noticed florian verts yesterday i don't think he was expected to be in team of the week but he was announced and he was leaked he went from 75k all the way he was dropping with the market or everything was dropping he goes from 75k the leaks must have been first noticed here and then he jumped all the way to 87 of course this verts card was only like 60k but then we had the alex garcia sbc that made all the leverkusen links jump and now he's back down after he was 87k yesterday now he's back down to 76 which is why i'm looking at him right now trying to get him for the low 70s because i think hopefully he goes back into the mid 80s today as people invest in this card and they see him go out of packs that's obviously going to make his price appreciate in value because he's not going to be in packs. At least that is the thought process behind it. I think that's one of the, I guess if you call it safe investments right now, you can look into that. You can also look into that for players that are going to be out of packs for road to the knockouts. We're probably going to talk a little bit more about that right now. Now, if you don't want to do that and you don't want to invest because the market feels scary to you, do what I was just talking about. Get on the bids. I bid on um, Kamavinga yesterday. I got two Kamavingas on bid for like, I think it was 14 or was it like 15K flat? And it's small flips. It's not a lot of profit, right? It's small flips, but you make one to 2,000 coins a card. You find a player within your budget. I sold these first listing. I bought uh, Kolomani yesterday with a Hunter. He sells for like 9K. I bought him for 7.7 .7 with the hunter, flipped him for 9,000 coins. Lazy listed these Kolomanis as well. It works with informs. I bought Boniface for 20,000, listed him for 25, sold him pretty quickly, right? Just getting on the bids and lazy listing those players. If you go to the front page of Footbin, right here, these sorts of players get on bids. Just pick two, three, or four of them. Get on bids for any of them that you can afford, especially guys that you know are popular, and just see what kind of deals you can get. Yeah, sure, it's grindy, but you might make 20 to 30K an hour if you win five to six bids, you make four to five K a card a couple times an hour. That's positive movement, positive cash flow. When a lot of the rest of people in the market are losing coins, his prices are dropping. So that's kind of how I would do it right now. And I am going to shout a fodder investment. I know it's not the best time to do this because these cards are up and they could drop this weekend, depending on what content we get. But 85 is under 3000 coins. If you look at the rest of fodder prices, 84s, Maybe you get try to get those that is like close to discard as you can at 1.1. But I think 85s have the biggest potential to rise up. You see, there's still 3K below 86s. 86s have already gone up some since we've had other SBCs. Now, this could come down a little bit this weekend still because of the Alaba SBC going to be expiring. We still have Holland. We're going to have new SBCs coming out for Road to the Knockout. Jota was leaked yesterday. But we're going to talk more Road to the Knockout tomorrow, of course. But I think 85s. If you get them under 3K, that's pretty no risk. But that's kind of like a longer term hold investment. That's like you're buying those and you're going to sit on them for maybe a week. Who knows? Whenever we start to get SBCs, a week, two weeks, probably no more than three. I would imagine the next two weeks, 85s would spike. And then you're hoping to see them go to like 5K. And then you're selling them for 2,000 coins more. I think you can make that investment long term and be fine. And also, last shout if you want to buy anybody from the current team of the week. I'm not saying a meta card, because I do think that some of these players, Adiemi is very overpriced because of this quick step plus, the whole speed boost thing that's going on right now. Um, that This is a crazy, crazy card. You know, Messi, actually Kavadet Skelia looks maybe a little low at the moment. I think he's, is he 90K flat? That's got to be, yeah, wow. I think he's usually around 100K. So that's maybe a smidgen low for him. 
Lamine Yamal, a lot of people want to buy him as well. I would still believe in these cards. Could they drop still, though, with the market being what it is right now? Yes, they still could dip, but they are going out of packs today, and that is something to consider. If you're holding on to one of these, you no longer have supply to worry about. Only panic. I guess like Messi yesterday, I think was 289. So Messi's actually had a bit of a bounce back. A lot of people want to invest in him. I still think this is one of the best cards you could buy right now. That is going out of packs as an inform. I think you want 300k flat though or below. So that ship may have sailed. We'll see if there's any panic before Friday with the new promo. But these cards go out of packs today. My best investment for these are Trinkau, Chambers, Hudson Odoi, Ricky Pouge, Powato discard ones really as well pick one up put it in the club forget about it until they go to 20k that's the best investment at the moment that's only if you have more than 100,000 coins if you have more or if you have less than 100,000 coins i don't think putting that many coins into one little investment like that is worth it i think i would just hold on to your coins keep trading and building them up before going and sinking too much into just those cards that are going to take a long time to rise now let's talk wednesday today we already of course showed you the team of the week these cards will be in packs starting today these are not official ratings just official players again luis diaz rafinha if you invested in a luis diaz gold i want to shout this one more time on the topic of out of packs golds if you invested in a luis diaz or a rafinha i would not be surprised if you saw these cards actually go down in price today after the content drop because these have been invested in a lot people are going to be expecting their gold to go out of packs and all of a sudden their gold card to spike and in the state of the market that we're in right now i don't think that's going to happen i just honestly think they might stay the same they might even drop a little bit that could create another investing window for those two cards, maybe for Shun Min Sun as well, maybe even for Florian Verts, as I'm talking about this, right? Maybe he rises up today uh, towards the content drop because people are buying this card because it's going to go out of packs. You know, they're excited for that. But maybe he does drop afterwards because, again, the state of the market, right? People start selling, the supply hits, whatever, from the investors. That's one thing to watch out for today is maybe some of those cards even dipping after content. But that's going to be a part of our content today. Other than that, today on Wednesday, like I think back to last Wednesday, what did we have? Um, I think we had one of, yeah, we had a Team of the Week plus Cosmetic Evo. whoop de doo I don't think anybody did that. And we had the Early Access Challenge 1. Maybe another Early Access Challenge today. Maybe another Pack SBC similar to this one. Not quite sure. I wouldn't expect a really crazy day. Again, we still have the Taram Player of the Month Serie A that is still out there. And I think there's also maybe a, a shout for like one last World Tour player. We had Dan Juma. We had Alex Garcia. I think we could get another either Spanish, La Liga, or maybe a Liga F player today via a World Tour SBC because that's kind of a whole part of the new season, right? And EA wants those cards to be out. They're going to be out for a long time. And again, the World Tour SBCs, Danjuma and Alex Garcia, have been good. So we could have a decent player SBC today as well. We'll have to see. But of course, one of the biggest parts of today is the last day to play Division Rivals. Guys, Rivals yesterday for me, well... It was mid. I got my reward, but it's, it was a little tough out there, man. If you want to watch more highlights, check out the second channel where we have kind of yesterday's RTG progress and everything that we were doing. It was a little rough, to be fair. It was like two days ago was great. Yesterday was a bit rough. Um, I think I'm going to chill with it right here, though, and maybe try out a few more players, but I feel no need to try to sweat out 30 more points in Division 5 at this stage. I'd rather just get my 15 points done, my 5 wins equivalent, be done. Maybe we do squad battles. Maybe we venture into champs qualities a little bit. But even then, I might still have to, I still have to play rivals, actually, so I can get quality points for champs playoffs. So I'll be playing probably some rivals today just because I need to get my quality points up to get moving towards that. Um, and I'd like to get that going and not fall behind in that category. So not expecting a whole lot today on Wednesday, but you never know. Could be surprised. And of course, we're going to be watching the market, continuing to grow our coin total and making some dough. So if you guys are excited for that today, drop a thumbs up on the video, comment down below if you have any questions, and of course, subscribe if you're new. Check out the sec second channel once again. And yeah, and I'll see you guys in the stream today. That link is down below in the description. Appreciate you. Have a great Wednesday. It's been Nathan Wood Accountant. I will see you there later today. Peace out.